Welcome to Artistic Adventures. This is part two of our Blythe customization project. We're going to go step by step through a whole customization of a Blythe. And today we're mostly working on the lips, but I'll also show you the tools I use. Hey guys, so the last time I left you, we had just uh, pulled apart the head of our Blythe doll and uh, we're getting ready to do some customization. But I wanted to tell you, first of all, that uh, this week, Ally Express has been having one of their sales where they have really good prices on Blythe dolls. Uh, I just bought some of these. Uh, the sale, I believe, ends today. This says sale ends in 14 hours, 44 minutes, and 6 seconds. Um, so you can get a full factory Blythe with the movable body plus, as free gift, the hands for like $24.70. That's an amazing price. Um, if you want to know the exact vendor that I used, I can, uh, put it in a comment, just ask me, but, uh, if you go to Ally Express and just type in a search for Blythe dolls, you're going to get a bunch of them. Uh, just make sure you get the ones that, uh, you know, have the extra body and look for the ones with extra hands as a gift. Some of them will come with an extra face plate. Uh, they may be just a little bit more expensive than this. But I have enough extra face plates that I don't really need them. So I just wanted to let you know about that. If you're interested in customizing or trying your hand at this, um, this is a good place to start. And for not that much money, of course, you'll have to wait about four to six weeks to get the doll. But <laughs> you can go back and watch the videos I'm doing and maybe, you know, do your customization then. Or you could check around and if you already have one, start on that. All right. So I just wanted to show you that for now. And then... Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is if you go to Pinterest and you search for custom Blythes, you're going to get some really cute dolls. So, like, you could just look for some ideas and you can see the difference in this face, the difference in the lips and the expression. And I think that's what really gets you hooked is seeing how you can customize them and... Uh, make them look so different. Each one's a little bit different just because of the way the lips are done or the way that uh, the hair is styled. Uh, just the, they're just adorable. What can I say? All right, so, <clears throat> oh, here's another one with a completely different look. You can see that. So, let's talk about the equipment that you're going to need, first of all, to to do customization. So you don't really need all that much. Uh, you can start out small and then get bigger if you want. Uh, one of the things that I did is I bought this. It's actually a uh, nail thing to work on nails with. And I think I got it on Ally. Either that or Wish. And it came with this set of little bits that go into it. Uh, you don't need all of these, but since it came with it, it was kind of nice. And then I found that they had this exact same set on Amazon for like 15 bucks, which is not bad. I'll put a link for it in the description block. But the ones in here that I really, really love using are these ball-ended ones. There's like a large, medium, small. And there's even one that has like kind of a even smaller ball. These are good for uh, grinding down areas so that it doesn't take so much time when you're first getting started with shaping the face. I really like those. Uh, some of these others are great for when you're making the nostrils a little bit bigger so you can use those. Now this is not like a Dremel. This vi really vibrates. It's not, uh, it's not going in a circle like a drill. You know, so it's a little bit different action, but if you can't afford a Dremel or you don't want a Dremel or you just prefer this, because I, I actually kind of like this smaller thing to work with. Um, it's not quite as, a, as aggressive, I guess. You can also get this head, which goes in and it's you can get these little grindy sandpaper things, although they really can grind fast, so you want to be careful with that. 
There's other nail tools you can get, stuff like this, where you may use some of these. I think I've used that and that. Not so much the other ones. Maybe that, yep. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I would use that for. But anyway, uh, there's different tools you can get that you don't have to pay for, like Dremel type tools. It's it's These are the nail tools. So this makes it a lot easier to really get into some of the, uh, you know, grinding down areas where sandpaper would just take a really long time. And these are simple to use. Just You just turn this on and turn this on and, and it works. Okay. That's one thing, and you don't have to start out with that. Uh, the things that I really think you need are this. <laughs> Where's the front of it? This is uh, the 3M softback sanding sponge. They come like this. They come in the sheets like this. They're very fine grain. These are the. Let's see, these are the. Super fine. I think there is a even more fine one, but I, I can't remember. But anyway, these are super fine, and I like these the best. And then I cut them in strips like this because it's easier to get into places on the doll. So, like, I'll just use my uh, kitchen shears that got used for the wrong things and then became my craft shears. <laughs> and, uh, I just cut it in strips like that depending on how you want to do it but because it's spongy it really helps you to get into the crevices and places one other thing about you don't have to have this but I found this pack it's like a huge pack for nails it's a coarser grit but it's a sponge excuse me but it's a sponge I like these too, um, and this was like very inexpensive. Uh, I'll see if I can find all the links for this stuff and put it in the description box. I bought this a while back, so I'll have to go back and search my purchases. But uh, this is a coarser uh, grain than, than the 3M, so this would be something you might start with to get some areas, you know, more down than, uh, sanded down than others. And then you might go in with this later, you know, to finish off your sanding. I've also used things like uh, these blocks for fingernails, um, like in medium fine and extra fine. Uh, don't find that they last very long, so they're not really a cost-effective thing, but they certainly can work, and I like that they're spongy too. But uh, personally, I really think these are the most important. Uh, you don't you know, have to have the orange ones or, or anything else. You can also even use fingernail files at times, uh, but this is the one you need right here <laughs> because it can really kind of do almost everything, and uh, it's the one you have to have, I feel like, to get that final surface that you need. Okay, so we got that. Uh, we talked about that. The other thing are exacto knives, and the blades that I really use the most are the this curved blade. Hang on a minute. I'm going to get my other exact now. There's three that I use. So I use this curved blade a lot. I like this because when you're scraping on the skin, uh, if you're using this kind of blade, it doesn't really work because you might be scraping a smaller area. And this is really more for cutting like larger areas a straight line or whatever but I do use this shape I use just that's kind of the traditional exacto shape do use that some but I use this a lot and then the other one I use a lot is this one this is kind of a, a very short angled blade I use that a lot so I keep these three on hand because I, I use them at different times and I don't want to have to change blades. So I actually have three separate exacto knives. And you can get a set of, of blades. Um, you don't have to buy, you know, one blade at a time. Like I bought this. This is a pack of a hundred blades. This is that traditional one. You can get these, you know, on Amazon for pretty cheap because you're going to, 
blood you're gonna dull these pretty quick on the doll um, so those are I think those are kind of the main tools that I use for the carving and making the uh, changes to the structure of the face and so now I want to talk about the way that you can shape a face in a certain way so that's coming up next okay so let's look at our let me get my camera positioned here let's look at what we're going to start with Woo! okay um, I put a paper towel down because you're going to make a lot of sandy particles and it's easier to kind of get them up than have them go all over the place so um, the first thing that you want to do is basically sand the entire face and you're going to sand the back and you're going to sand the eyelid because these are all things we're going to work on or put color on and we need a matte surface so I'm just going to start with the eyelids I use a circular motion and the reason for that is even though this is a fine sandpaper you can still leave marks of sanding if you go straight in a line I find that sanding in a in a circle kind of gives it the matte appearance that you want without putting a lot of streaks or things in it and saves you from having to go over it with maybe an even finer sandpaper so like I said this size it does a good job of sanding as well as buffing and getting a lot of the coarser marks out that you have when you're working on the doll. So you're going to do a sort of a combination of carving, cutting, and sanding to get the face. So you just got to do something like that to get the mat. Same things for the back. Don't really worry about, you know, any shape back here. You just want to do this. Now, when we're working on the dolls like um, Monster High that have the softer faces, softer plastic or rubber, or whatever it is, um, those dolls, you know, you can use acetone to get color off or whatever. You, you don't want to use acetone on Blythe or any of the dolls that have these harder plastic surfaces because it kind of melts it. So you actually have to get the color off by sanding it off. And sometimes I will just go ahead and start with this coarser block just to save time and then I go over it with the other one because the color tends to be a little harder to get off than what it takes to just make it matte. So, as you can see, I'm still going in a circular motion. Now, I will say, occasionally, I have had to use a paintbrush with some acetone just to get maybe a little bit of this off, but I use a very small amount, and I just use it like in a crevice, and then I, I wipe it off. I don't try to get too much on it just to get the paint off. Although, what I've learned is that even this with this crevice, you're going to end up carving this, so you'll, you'll carve that line away where, where there's that little bit of the pink left. But I don't like it because it kind of messes with the image that I have, you know, for the lips and what I'm trying to, what, you know, the de design that I'm trying to achieve. Okay, so I'm just going to keep on sanding until I get that all matte. Now, looking at this particular doll, grinders in the way there. Let's see if I can get this in focus for you. All right, notice the shape of her nose and her lips. If you look at this face, you can kind of see the difference. She's got 
this doll has just like basic lips that go straight across. Um, the nose is very pointed and you know narrow comes to a point. It's not rounded. There's no demarcation of the nostrils or the the ridge here, the philtrum. And then if you look at this doll face you see she has this full bottom lip that has these two sides that are are sort of bulbous looking and a sort of indention in the middle um, the the corners go down a little bit and these front lips kind of come up and then down immediately uh, this is carved out the nose is round this has been carved and a nostrils uh, also, she's got this cute little sort of indention under the bottom lip and a little bit of a of a dimple right there. And that gives her a really cute little expression. Now, there's just so many things that you can do to a doll, but what I wanted to talk about is, is how you use the face of the Blythe to get what you want, okay? So, let's look at the, let's look at the face again, all right? So, what you have to think about is that you don't have a lot of thickness. You can see about how thick the plastic is. So you don't have a whole lot of thickness to grind and, you know, change. So you really have to look at what you want to take away from the face or what you want to come out. So, you have to use this as a starting point and then let's say you want to make the top lip bigger then what you're going to do is come back further and start grinding this part back here down to make this area all of this area stand out and then you might you know curve this out some um, you know to make the groove here we'll have to grind down into there this nose the angle it's sort of like a piggy nose to me, that's what I look at it. It's angled like this instead of like this. So you may have to cut off this at, a, at an angle to give it that that look. And then you're going to have to uh, grind off some of this point to make it more rounded. You're going to have to go in here and carve to make that look more defined and then you're going to have to put holes in here to make the nostrils okay so with the bottom lip let's say if you wanted to make it stick out more you're going to have to carve down in here if you wanted to make the lips wider you're going to have to grind over here let's say to make this look like part of the lip i hope that's making sense so you get you start with this, but then you're going to have to use whatever thickness you have to change the shape of the face. And the best way to start doing that is to use either a pencil or sometimes I'll use a like a blue marker pen and to shape out the face. So that's what we're going to do next. All right. Now, I'm looking at this doll, and I, I chose this one because the shape of her lips, I think, uses a lot of the different shapes that uh, the dolls use. But you can do so much with these dolls. There are also pictures I can show you, and I'll try to pull some of those out, uh, where people have actually opened up the mouth uh, and put, uh, like, done clay teeth and put behind it so it looked like they have teeth. Uh, tongues. There's just a numerous things that you can do. Uh, but I like this doll because it's made the top lip a little bit fuller. It's widened this area between the cupid's bow here. It's widened that. It, it was much more narrow. It's made these bottom lips fuller and also put this little crease here. And also the other technique of putting these 
little creases in the lip is it's kind of difficult for me I, that's kind of the hardest part for me to make it look realistic but we're going to do that now the other thing you'll notice is these way these are painted this red part comes down but the the mouth itself the wideness of it has been extended and we're going to do that also uh, remember i talked about having to carve down the angle of the nose see this nose is very very straight back so we're going to have to carve down the angle of the nose but we're going to start on the mouth and i want to show you how how i do that so i took a brown watercolor pencil because if you make a mistake you can either erase it with your white eraser or you can take a paintbrush with water and just wipe it off so what we've done to try to get this effect I wanted to mark higher above the lip this is where the the lip it let me show you I can't do it with that pencil this is where the the top of the lip is regularly and I've moved it up to here so we're going to have to carve back in here. We're going to have to carve this out more to widen the filter. Okay. The bottom lips, I've curved down below where the bottom lip ends, which is right here really on this doll. We've gone from here down to here. And then we're going to put that crease in the middle. And the bottom lips kind of come up and end, but the mouth itself is extended over here and we'll have to do that by carving out this crease more we're going to have to put that a little bit deeper and then we have that the two creases to create that sort of poochy look on the on the top lip so we're going to start with the lip depending on how far we get then we'll go to the nose but this is a matter of grinding out the areas that we want to go down so that the areas we want to stick out more do stick out more <laughs> um, that doll has a little bit of a cleft chip chin there so we'll carve that out too now to do that I usually start with this bigger ball because it covers more territory than the smaller areas, uh, the smaller balls would. I use those for smaller areas. So what I'm going to start doing is going around and carving out some of these areas that I want to go in. I may not use the big ball down here because I have the that dip in the chin to deal with. So I might use a smaller ball down there. And, uh, and then we'll work on some other techniques of carving. Okay, so we're going to start with this and see where we go. I want to say with this type of tool, if this is what you're using, I sort of go in circular motion because if you just go down, it's going to just press down. It's going to really make a deep area and you you know you want it to be somewhat smooth because you're gonna have to smooth all this out with sandpaper and that's the hardest part I think of the whole process is once you get all the carving done you've got to smooth this out so it looks as smooth as the rest of the face and then um, you know it it makes it harder when you have like grooves deeper grooves so doing it like this I find uh, kind of helps to keep it smoother and not to go too deep or create ridges. So I just wanted to say that part.
Okay, so I think it's always best to kind of go slow, do a little bit at a time, work on the other side, you know, to keep it symmetrical. Um, you can see we've deepened this area out. While you're doing that, you've got a smooth back so it doesn't look like it's just a, you know, deep ridge right there. You've got to smooth it back into the cheek. So you're going to be deeper here and then kind of ease this back to where it meshes, melds with the shape of the cheek. The other thing is you don't want to go too far that way on this area because we've got to widen the feldrum. And I think just to help out with that, I'm going to go ahead and carve that. And I'm going to use the medium size ball for that. These things just push in there and pull out. So, so I'm just going to go in over the lip where I've marked it and deepen this area. Alright, that's all I'm going to do on that area for now because I don't want to go too far at one time. Now, if you don't want to buy one of these, the other thing you can get are these small carving tools. Pull a few of those out that look like this. Well, that's not really... Well... You can get small carving tools like this, and then you could, um, you know, go in and carve out that area like that. I like using this. I think it's just smoother, and like I said, you can get these pretty cheap off of Wish or even Amazon, I think. So, I'll try to look up some of these for you. I bought these when I first started, and then I never used them. I just thought they would be helpful, but really don't like them all that much. Everybody has their own way of doing this, though. You may find you like to do a carving thing. But I think for the price of that kit, you can get one of these that comes with the attachment. So uh, the only thing you have to be careful of is you notice when I was doing this, if you press too hard, it tends to want to go whoop, like that, you know, and then you you make a hole where you don't want a hole. So you have to be really careful when you're using these. Just sort of, you know, do it lightly and not press too hard. And uh, do a little bit at a time, not try to get, get there all at one time. So I'm going to go off camera and do this side over here the same way I did this side. And then we'll come back. Okay, so we've sanded down more here and here, or ground down more, I guess. And just to give you, or give me too, a better idea of where we are, I always like to go over it with this fine sandpaper, just so I kind of can see how it really, really looks. You know, because this is how it's going to look if it was finished if we sand it down just a little bit and it also helps you to see where you do need to do more work or less work because it's 
more obvious when it's sanded. Um, so, what I see is, I see a little ridge here that I need to even out between here and there in the cheek. I need to even that out because it looks like kind of there's a little hole right there where I ground too much. And then um, I'm pretty happy with the shape of the upper lip at this point. I know I'll probably do more work, but... Um, I want to go ahead and start on the bottom lip and do some grinding down here and then um, see where we are overall. I like to just kind of keep working around different areas. So to work on the bottom lip, the first step, I will do some grinding, but I want to use the smaller ball because I don't want to grind down too much of where's my pointer I don't want to grind down too much of this area because that's the you know the protrusion of the chin I want to just get really in this crevice and do some grinding without get losing too much of this whole protrusion of the chin area so I'm going to use the small ball which looks like that and do a little bit of grinding with that. So, carved a little bit down here and just a little bit up there. Let's see where we are so far. Oh, the other thing I want to do real quick is just go ahead and get rid of some of the pointiness of this nose. <laughs> it's like it's so pointy. Like an elf nose, which I guess if you were making an elf, you'd want to leave it. This is really going to make it look more childlike and more, more like a real person than, than the doll's actual nose. So just grind the way out that with the coarser sandpaper for a little minute. And we'll come back and do a little bit more. I'm also sending off a little bit of the sharpness of the ridge here so I want to blunt that out I'm going to widen that whole nose area up All right, that's probably good for now. We'll come back to that at a later point as we start working on the nose. Let's see where we are so far. And just sand this down a little bit. Or I'm trying to taper off the deeper part to the cheek. Okay, so. 
you can see the difference here between the nose and the mouth. We've made the mouth, the lips bigger. We've changed the shape of them a little bit and we've made the mouth a little bit wider. And also we got rid of the pointy nose which you can see is super pointy. So you can already tell it's looking more like a face, more like a child face than the original dolls is. Okay, so now that I've got this part started, what I find when I get down here is that I'm going to have to start using the exacto and I'm going to use the one with the curved blade because well, I'll just show you. Let's just look at that. So if you let's say you're carving this, you want to carve like just that area right there. Because this is straight, when you carve it and you come down, you're going to hit over in this area too. So using the carve allows you to just focus on this area. Or if you're using the point, just like that much of the blade. Because of that, I tend to dull this one down a lot. Um, now, I wanted to show you there's two ways to use the exacto. Okay, there's there's actual cutting and then there's scraping motion. So if you want to scrape to sort of smooth off an area, it's really good for that. You can see I'm getting a lot of the plastic off with that, but it doesn't go too deep. So if you don't want to use the grinder, you could use this technique also to get down. It's going to take a little bit longer. I'd like to come back and use this afterward to sort of smooth off an area or to get it more precisely how I want it. Now you can also cut and you can also carve. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the angle of this nose so that it's not such a piggy nose. Just by cutting straight down. This is so hard to do on camera. <laughs> You're always in an awkward position. But I want to try to show it to you as I'm doing it. So you can see what I'm doing. Because I think that's one of the things that some of the Blythe um, tu tutorials that I've seen. is It's just kind of hard to really get an idea of their technique or why they're doing it or whatever. Um, that's why I'm actually going to talk through this because I want you to know as I'm doing it what I'm doing and why. Why I'm using a certain tool, why I'm doing it, carving it or cutting it versus grinding it. So I'm going to, like I said, take this whole thing step by step. So what I'm trying to do is make this less of an angle like this and more straight up and down like this. Looks more like a human nose. So we're just really carving down the bottom part, not really the top part. Just getting rid of the angle at the bottom. It's always better to not cut enough and then you can go back maybe with a different tool to get the rest out than to cut too much because <laughs> once it's gone it's gone <laughs> yeah and that's worse maybe having that extra face plate you know would help but like I said I, I've done this now so many times I'm getting pretty well aware of you know how I'm using the tools to make a mistake so I'm trying to be really careful um, 
these blades, as you know, are very sharp. So this is a, not for young children, but uh, I'm certainly sure if you have children, they'd love to see you do it. And maybe they could help with sanding, you know, some part of the process. All right, so we got the, the nose cut off, so it's not so angled out. And we'll work on that more a little bit later. What I want to do now is get this area here deeper. Sorry, I'm getting off camera there. Getting this area right here deeper. So I'm going to use my exacto for this. I think my camera got moved. It's getting so far away from me. I can't work. Get this a little bit better position. Okay, my glass is on so I can see. The other thing is you really do need good light for this. <laughs> really good light. So what I'm going to do is go down kind of with the point here and just sort of scrape to get some depth on this lip. You can see where this is, I guess you can see. Hopefully you can see that this is a process that is more um, time consuming and less dramatic than the uh, grinding process. So the grinding kind of comes first, it gets away the masses, and then we go in with the carving. Alright, so to uh, get the protruding bottom lip that we want, we're going to have to also look at the angle of this bottom lip. It, it kind of, oh gosh, I'm off camera again. It comes down kind of at an angle like this when it needs to go like straight under. So just at the bottom part, I'm going to cut this to angle it in. Really trying hard to stay in the frame. <laughs> this is so hard sometimes. You want to start pulling it to you because you can't get to it well. Also, don't want to cut myself. Okay, so I think you can see we've increased the depth here along here. gonna keep slowly working on that so sometimes it's good to cut and then sometimes it's good to scrape like when you get into an area where you maybe can't get a good angle on cutting you know, maybe then scraping is going to look a little bit better. So, you kind of have to do this by feel. You kind of have to um, look at the area. See if you can get your exacto in there. And then you may at some point, you know, need to use a different type of blade. And here's where, <laughs> just did it, what I was going to warn you about. Okay, so like I'm going like this, scraping. And the exacto just goes across the chin. Don't worry, you can scrape that out. Just go over it like that, over the scratch, or you can sand it. Don't panic if you do that. Unless it's really, really deep, 
you can usually figure out a way to to fix it. So I'm going to continue working on this off camera so I can get a little bit closer to me. So I have a feeling I'm going to cut myself if I'm working kind of at arm's length. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so we got that a little bit deeper in there. Now I want to work on trying to shape this crease and make these more roundy looking on each side. So I've switched over to this blade. So I got a little short blade now that can kind of get in here where I want to cut this groove. I don't really feel like this blade fits this handle, but it works. And it's one I had, so I'm going to use it. So I just want to cut a ridge in here. I'll sand it out later so it'll look better, but want to get the depth going also gonna cut off this angle or angle this so that it looks more rounded because these lips you see let me go back to the picture here Whoop. oh where did I go uh, Oh, I hate it when it does this. Oh, there she is. So if you can see how roundy this is. I think they call these bee stung lips, you know, where they look real poofy and pouty. So each of these is really rounded off a lot. So I'm going to work on getting those rounder looking right now. And they kind of abruptly come up here instead of tapering off. They kind of go straight up to the crease between the lips. So I'm just going to carve that off, that sort of edge. So, um, I think I told you in my last video that I'm scheduled to have surgery, so I'm actually going to have to be out of work a little while, just because my knees are so bad I can't walk very well without a lot of pain, because it's bone on bone, I'm just sort of pressing the bones together in my knees, so I'm actually going to have to take a little bit of a short term disability. I know, Belle, Belle, my dog, she's so upset by that. No, she's not. <laughs> but, um, you know, hopefully then I'll maybe, you know, be able to do a few more videos. And that'll be a good thing. Trying to find the silver lining and all that. So, um, in late August, then I'll be able to have my knee replacement surgery. And hopefully get back to being a little bit more active. I'll really be happy about that because I like to be active. Don't like the fact that I can't get around very good. But I'll tell you, really made me appreciate handicapped people more because I tried getting around in a wheelchair the last week I was working and that's really hard. <laughs> it's like I don't have, first of all, I don't have the upper body strength to do it. And it's not so bad when you're going along on a, like an even floor, you know, like when I'm in one of my facilities working. But sidewalks and roads and that sort of thing are pretty difficult. Also, when I was using it to go to some places and I had to access, you know, like a 
well actually I'll tell you it was the DMV <laughs> I went to get a, a temporary uh, handicap sticker so the place that you go for the handicap sticker you can hardly get into like seriously I could not have gotten into the to the office if somebody had not opened the door and held it and wheeled me up the ramp because the ramp was at such a sharp angle there was no way I had the strength and I'm, not, I'm pretty sure a lot, not a lot of people would have been able to so you know although we have these laws you know that places have to be handicap accessible sometimes I think they're kind of token accessibility like that place of all places where you have to go to get your handicap, handicap sticker you can't get into it so I'm going to be really more tolerant and appreciative of handicapped people. Especially people that don't look handicapped. You know, there's people that I've always heard these stories, you know, like there's people, well, like me. Like if you just looked at me, you'd say, you know, what's, she's not handicapped, she looks fine. Till you see me walk <laughs> and I'm limping. But um, there are people who have chronic pain issues and other issues that you can't see if they have a handicap sticker leave them alone don't say anything to them you don't know their deal you don't know their pain you haven't walked in their shoes but if you do want to appreciate handicapped people get a wheelchair and go out on a sidewalk and then try to go into some places that are allegedly handicap accessible really open your eyes I don't know if any of you guys have chronic pain but um, it's not a good thing it's you know it's usually a thing that people can't see it's not like oh your leg is missing you're handicapped or you know if you have some of the demy demyelinating diseases like multiple sclerosis or sometimes it you know affects how you look sometimes it doesn't Sometimes you can have MS and look completely un unaffected, but I assure you, some of those people still have trouble walking. And some people have pain that you can't see. So be tolerant. I will say this, people were very nice to me. <laughs> like people were really often like, jumping up to get the door and <laughs> offering to roll me, you know, places and that was kind of nice, but I don't know, I felt very conspicuous, you know, like like the people were staring at me. <laughs> and they were. I guess people are like, oh, I wonder what's wrong with her or something, you know. I don't know. But it gave me a new perspective and uh I think everybody ought to try that. You know, everybody ought to try to just be handicapped. Alright, so um, I've got this ridge cut pretty well. Uh, I've come up here on the side. This one I didn't get very good. This one's still kind of angled looking. Get this one down a little bit. Oh, it seems like that is so hard to cut. If any of you are in wheelchairs, not I'm, I'm not talking about motorized wheelchairs, I'm talking about regular wheelchairs. I'd love to get a comment from you about how easy you think it is to get around and if you think that places really are handicap accessible or do you see problems with that like I did. I'd really be interested to hear what you have to say. You know, maybe... Maybe we've all assumed that that deal is taken care of, and it's really not. All right, so that's kind of where we are right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and try to carve out this line between the lips some. And I'm going to do that using my exactos in an upside-down position like that.
course the thing is, you know, there's a tendency for your blade to go whew, right across the skin, but just kind of do it easy. And I'm going to, you know, I've showed you how kind of to do that. I'm going to go off camera so that I can hold this closer and be a little more careful. And I'll be right back. All right. I've gone in here and deepened this a little bit. Now the next thing I want to work on is this part of the upper lip. Ah! Why do I keep touching that? <laughs> All right. This part of the upper lip, there's the this part that protrudes out. I want to carve in these places on either side and then some of these other little places, these little creases in the lip. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to start with this blade and I want to just mark where I want those indentions to be. Now they don't go all the way up to the top of the lip, so just be careful how far you go. You want to have to, you know, round off these edges that are so sharp. Kind of scrape them. And then, uh, try to leave as much of this part of the lip down at the bottom as possible. So you're really just working on the edges. Kind of go in at a V shape with your cuts, you know, and then you can get it opened up a little bit instead of it just being a sharp slice. Go from one side and then to the other, and then you can scrape out. I'm going to have to deepen this a little bit more underneath that to make it look right. But I'm just going to keep doing the same process going a little deeper each time until I get it the depth that I want to where it looks the way I want and then for the smaller creases you're just gonna scrape up like that to make the crease you don't want them to be you know, real symmetrical or all the same length. We're going to really vary how that looks because that's how real lips look. Yeah, go take a look in, the, in your mirror and kind of look at your own lips to see how they look. This is just a process of trying to make the Blythe doll's lips look a little bit more realistic. When you're working on it and you've been using the same blades for a while, you're going to notice at some point you're going to be like, uh, why is this not work cutting very good? You do get 
very dull blades doing this type of work on the plastic so when it starts to feel like you can't do it anymore <laughs> get you a new blade but then what you have to worry about is because it's new and you've been used to using more force with a dull blade or duller blade then you're gonna overcut <laughs> and cut too much so just be careful when you do get a new blade that you keep in mind that it's gonna cut a whole lot better and you wanna just go very slow um, small cuts at a time don't use as much pressure pressure so I'm just kind of rounding rounding off the edges of of these creases these major creases there these smaller ones you you don't have to do quite as much to because they don't have as much depth I'm going to round off this top of this bottom lip some too it looks too flat I want this to stick out in the middle more so I'm going to cut in along the top at an angle I'll sew it on the bottom but I'm going to go off camera and work on this so I can get a little closer to me but what I'm going to be doing is making sure that these look good I'm going to make this a little bit deeper I'm going to work on rounding off this by cutting up the bottoms and the tops so that this is more protruding than than this all right and I'll be back in a sec here's where we are at this point we have got these pretty rounded off and kind of uh, spread this gap out a little bit so it's not such a straight line I'm gonna sand in there some more later uh, we've got the mouth widened kind of going out on either side we've got the upper lip made larger and coming down on either side we've got this part carved out and we started the carving of the lips although I don't really finish this until I've completely finished everything I kind of get everything sanded and then I go back in and do a little bit more contouring of the lips but we did get a few of those crevices put in the lips especially this main one making this part of the lip there okay uh, we did sand off the nose and we're going to end this video here because I want to try to do this almost in sections so this is going to be more about doing the basic lip shape uh, then when we come back next uh, video we're going to work on contouring the basic shape of the nose I do these all kind of in circles so like I work on the lips get it to this point then I gotta go work on the nose get it to a certain point then I come back to the lips just because uh, the, the, the fact that you're working this close together with these two features it's like um, you know I'm gonna cut down this part to make the lips that is gonna affect the nose somewhat so when I go in to do the nose and I'm contouring more of the nose it's going to affect this part which affects the lips so then I may have to come back in and do a little reshaping here but this is the basic shape for the lips that we want uh, we certainly have lots more to do on this doll it is a pretty lengthy process you can't do this in one day if you are if you do then more power to you but really it takes a lot of work a lot of sanding there's much much more sanding to come <laughs> lots of slapping so anyway I'm gonna leave it here for today I hope that you learned some techniques to start this and I think you know don't be afraid I, I was really afraid when I did my first one I was like oh, you know I'm gonna mess it up you can always get another face plate it's not that hard it's not that big a deal 
you've got to learn what it feels like to grind and cut and, and carve so you, that you're able to achieve the shape that you want. And I found that once I did the first one and got through it and didn't, you know, completely mess it up, that I really loved it. There's something very satisfying about carving and shaping and making this into something. I guess that's how sculptors feel. Although they're starting with a, you know, say a block of marble. We're starting with uh, a block of marble that's already been somewhat shaped and then we're going to shape it more. So that's kind of how I think of it. But um, anyway, um, I think we've made good progress today and I invite you back for the next video where we're going to continue and make more really work on the nose. All right. So thanks a lot and stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video. We got more coming up and I may be posting more frequently. So as always, make sure you subscribe and also hit that little bell down there for notifications so you'll know when a new video is up. Bye.